Mary. I'm a second year MPP student. And today I will talk about something rather ordinary. But I want to tell you why it is everything else than ordinary. I will talk about light and some basic qualities of light. And I will tell you why now is a very good time to think about light. So, as you will see in the back in a second, um, this is something that comes up immediately when you think about light, sunlight. And when we think about sunlight, we will recognize immediately that light is needed for life. The plants need it to um, create oxygen and uh, we need it to have vitamin D. But I thought when I want to talk about light here, I couldn't talk about it without talking about this guy here. Albert Einstein, who revolutionized our understanding of light and how we see light. It was Albert Einstein that said in 1905 that light is not just a wave, but light is a small little particle. In fact, the smallest particle of energy that is. And that's not an error in the screen, that's my attempt to show you a photon. <laughs> uh, so, since light is energy, I will now tell you something about the coolest properties of light there are. And maybe some of you know it already, but um, I want to show it to you while talking about my favorite movie. So this is Maria de las Montañas, and she needs a new lamp. And she goes to Ikea, and for those of you who know Ikea stores, know exactly that this is the light section. And she approaches the salesman and says, listen guy, this is a very bad way to show me the lamps, because I will not see the difference this light will make in my dark room. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So light actually makes a bigger difference in a um, very dark room than in a light room or during sunlight. And I thought, well, maybe that's because of something like relativity, that um, we just perceive the light differently with our eyes and um, the so-called rods and cords. These are the cells in our eyes that are perceptive to light. And I thought, well, maybe um, <clears throat> I don't know enough about physics, I should ask somebody who knows about physics. So I approached my friend Javier, who studies physics in Bergen, and he said, well, Marino, um, while you are basically right about this relative perception of light, there is actually a very cool um, principle that underlies this vision or this, this perception. It's that energy always travels from high levels of energy to low levels of energy. And then he continued and he said that a low, a dark room is basically a low level of energy and that there is no such thing as darkness, um, but that darkness is simply the absence of light. Okay, and now you guys think, why is this girl telling us about light and all this stuff? <laughs> um, well, uh, while I was presenting, uh, preparing my presentation, I came across um, this quote by Martin Luther King who said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only love can, uh, light can do that, and hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And if we think about that, um, there is actually quite a similarity between light and love and compassion, because both are needed um, for life, and um, both are energies. But the truth is that right now, we are um, in quite a dark place, uh, it is like it is, um, we are surrounded by a lot of catastrophes around the world and um, especially at Harris right now we don't feel very comfortable. Um, we see pictures of um, refugee camps and um, refugees crossing the sea and dying and um, it's, it's quite a dark situation and moment in time. But I wanted to remember the basic principle of energy and that we will actually perceive energy and love right now more than we would in a very happy situation. And while this is a very, very extreme example of how this random act of kindness in dark moments can light up lives, I want to tell you about a very, very personal experience where I really noticed the difference that love can make. So the next picture was taken at approximately 4 a.m. in the morning, somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Namibia, after I just hang up uh, the phone with my beloved brother who told me that our very dear aunt had passed away all of a sudden. And you might imagine that this was already quite a sad situation, um, as it always is when somebody you love passes away. But the fact was that I was really in the middle of nowhere 
super far away from home and where my aunt lived. And um, I was in a conference, basically, with people whom I didn't know. They were very nice, but I just got to know them a few days earlier. And something very remarkable happened that day. The trainer um, asked the participants, approximately 100 um, during that day, to please um, keep a moment of silence and prayer for my beloved aunt. And all of a sudden, after this one minute of silence, without any coordination, 100 people would start to sing an African reef song for me and my aunt. And you can imagine that this really made a big difference. Um, I was at a very bad place, but this small act of love and compassion really gave me hope and helped me to survive the rest of the field trip, so to say. Okay, and why now you might think uh, this is um, more like an SSA talk, and maybe uh, <laughs> why is she telling, why is she telling us about that? I love SSA, but um, I, I was hesitant to talk about this because we are rigorous and we are Harris, right? And we're all about data. But it was actually the man who revolutionized our understanding of light who said that love is the ultimate answer. And when most of us will leave Harris in June or maybe next year June, I would like you to remember that basic principle of energy and light, and that is that it will matter most when we are at the lowest levels of energy. And why don't we just start right now and pass each other a hack because we couldn't get any cheesier anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right now, right? Uh, I was working for UNICEF. 